Hi, thanks for talking to me again. I appreciate it. I, I very course, much enjoyed you. the finale. Um, but before we oh, talk wonderful. specifically about the finale, I have to ask you, my other writers on the site keep telling me to ask this, and finally it's appropriate because you're the right person to ask. They want to, because they watched the original, they want to know what the reason was, if you could talk about changing the idea of the waiting room and why that is different. Um, it's a great question. I think the waiting room, you know, in the, in the original version of the show made a lot more sense because it was, it was easier to manage in that there wasn't a lot of present day storytelling. Yeah. Whereas in our show, there's an enormous amount of present day storytelling. So the idea of trying to like serve as that waiting room as well would be tricky. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> All right, now, the one thing we, we've discussed when we talk about this show is that a lot of this stuff that happens, especially going to the future, seems like something we expected maybe to happen, you know, season two, season three down the road. So can you talk about the decision to kind of move so fast? I mean, obviously, I'm sure you have, you know, more story, but, you know, coming, but can you sort of talk about that a bit? Well, I really think like the key to these shows, this kind of network television shows is, is you know, the danger becomes like, it, if you're not careful, the show becomes all middle, right? So like if you're, we, we hope to go for a very long run, as long as the original, hopefully. And so, you know, if we're telling a serialized story, it's hard to like really thin it out, you know, and only give morsels the whole way through. So for us, we, we're looking at every season like a book in a series of novels you really love to read. And so for us, each season needs to have a beginning, middle and end. And so most of the questions that get asked in the, you know, in the first episode of the season, in our mind, needed to be answered this season. So it could be its own self-contained thing. We have an amazing idea for what to do with season two and season three and beyond that have their own internal arcs that I think are really special and dynamic and cool. So, um, but yeah, that was, that's, that's one of the things we wanted to do. Okay, cool. I would think that it'd be safe to say, since we know that he's trying to stop Addison from being shot, that he's going to be in her timeline. Um, so can you sort of talk about some of the dangers of them kind of messing? I, I assume you can talk about that pre-episode, sort of some of how that might change the way they have to be careful about certain things. Well, sure. I mean, I'll just say very, very briefly, like, you know, it's it's dangerous to mess with time. Like even in the, when it's got nothing to do with us, you know, we sometimes ripple the events in the wrong way. And so when when Ben is dealing with, you know, a timeline that potentially touches on the characters we know so directly, um, you know, the implications if something goes wrong there are are pretty, pretty elevated, you know, not so he might save Addison, but if he does something else wrong, it could, you know, it could wreck the program, it could end the program, it could make the future that he knows unknowable or the present that he remembers unknowable, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. All right. Um, so I feel like this episode, one of the things I really liked is that it takes everybody and not just Ben. Mm -hmm. Can you sort of talk about that and why it was important to you to kind of make it more of a group effort? I mean, kind of the whole season is to some extent, especially because we keep seeing, you know, other people in the imaging chamber and all that. Yeah. I, I mean, for us, like if we're going to have a present day story, it's important that that present day story play a pivotal role in the storytelling, you know? So we we didn't want them to just be like Ben's helpers, you know? And we wanted the two stories, especially in the finale, to feel organic and tied together and, and kind of dovetail into a really satisfying ending for all of our characters, not just Ben. And so... um so yeah, so it just it just felt right to to finally earn the the time that we spend with those present day characters in this episode. Now we see other characters in the imaging chamber. Is there a possibility? And I don't know if you can really answer this or not, but is there a possibility we could see some other characters leaping? Because I mean, we know that obviously Ian leaps at some point. Maybe we have I don't know a flash forward or <laughs> something. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, that's getting pretty deep into the the mythology of the like the the show. So I, I don't want to say I mean, like, there's no immediate plans to have anyone else leap like, you know, Ben Ben is the leaper. All right, fair enough. Um, can you talk about creating sort of this future world, how you went about sort of creating that? 
Well, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, we have uh, an incredible art department, like truly one of the best art departments working in television right now. You know, this show is unlike any show on television in that we're basically doing a pilot every episode. Like every episode, we're starting from scratch. We have our Quantum Leap HQ, but everything else, there are no other standing sets. Like every every other show, it's brand new. So the amount that they've had to, you know, whether it's the Old West or, you know, the mm-hmm. 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 50s, it's just like the what they've been able to do on a on a very rushed schedule is, is truly unbelievable. So the ability to jump into the future, honestly, it was just about constraining <laughs> what their, you know, incredible vision was for it and, and making it because, you know, I don't want to give too much away, but, you know, it's it's. Um, yeah, it's hard to talk about the future without without giving too much away. But obviously, what you see in the the teaser for for the the episode, you know, is a kind of like bombed out, hollowed out quantum leap. And so it was very fun to take our home set and really really mess with it. Okay, fair enough. Can you talk a bit about what fans will see in the finale? Like something that you're allowed to maybe give away. Sure. I mean, you know, this is the conclusion of this season's story. You know, Ben leapt to save Addison's life and I think realizes quickly it's not as simple as that. And um, this is the final showdown between him and Leaper X. Like what, you know, the the fate of the program is in their hands and um, there's a lot of ways for it to go wrong. So it's it's incredibly fun. I think this is our best episode, truly. I I, I think, you know, it was spectacularly written uh, and, and directed and um, um, and we're just Margarita Matthews wrote, wrote this episode and uh, Chris Grismer directed it, who's our producing director. And it's just there's it's nonstop. It moves so fast. It's so emotional. It's so fun. It's um uh, it gave me the chills a couple times. I'm just incredibly proud of the whole team for for pulling together uh, a, a really magical finale. Yeah, I really liked it. I think it was my favorite, too. Um, now, I have to ask you a question, and I don't know if this is just I saw what I wanted to see, I guess, but I just wanted to ask you because you would be the person to ask. The episode with the nuclear reactor, it very, very much to me looked like the Stargate set. Is that just in my mind? Or was that done on purpose? I didn't have to ask because it drove me crazy after I watched that. I was like tweeting about it. Wasn't it wasn't done on purpose, honestly, but it was, I think when you put, you know, Woolsey in there. Yeah, well, that's it. It's like, it's very hard, very hard not for it to look like the the, the Stargate set. But um, no, that was not the intention. But it's so funny that you say that because when I walked down on that set, I, I got the same vibe. Yeah, I mean, there's only so many ways you can do like underground military bunker, I guess. <laughs> right, true. It might be too because I've been on the set. That probably makes a big difference too. Making you, you know, go. making there you feel go. like that. Um, the other thing I want to ask you is there? Can you talk about? I, I mean, I assume you have some idea. Do you know like who's going to maybe be guest starring next season? Is there anything you can say to that? I, yet? We can't announce anything yet i will say that we have started shooting we're already shooting episode four of season two so we're we're well into it and we have some incredible guest stars like like truly truly really exciting especially for um uh our nbc family we're we're really thrilled at, at who we've been able to get for for season two right is there anybody i don't know if you can tell me this, but i was gonna say do you have like a dream guest star that you didn't get that you can maybe say this is who i would love it someday to get on the show in the in the far future <laughs> i don't want to say you don't want to yes, say okay there, there, i figured you a, might we have not a small list of people yeah absolutely all right well thank okay. you i appreciate your time i very much enjoyed it and i'm looking forward to next season so <laughs> thank you so much for your support this season and it's always great talking to you you too all right have a good afternoon